In this video, we will define average rate of change. Suppose we have a function, f, defined on the closed interval from a to b. This is the set of x such that a is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to b. The average rate of change of the function f with respect to x on the closed interval from a to b is given by the formula change in f divided by change in x equals the function evaluated at b minus the function evaluated at a, all divided by b minus a. This formula gives a template that can be used when we have any function, an independent variable, and a closed interval. Let's consider the following scenario. Suppose we have a piston chamber that holds 10 to the 23rd molecules of an ideal gas at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. As the piston moves, the volume, which we'll re represent using V, the volume of the piston chamber varies. According to Boyle's law, the pressure, we'll denote with a P, of the gas is given by the function pressure evaluated at volume equals 4 divided by volume where volume is measured in liters and pressure is measured in units of atmospheric pressure, which we'll denote as ATM. When the piston is moved outward, the volume increases and the pressure changes. At what rate is the pressure changing with respect to volume when the volume increases from 3 liters to 3.2 liters? So the goal is to be able to use this template that we just gave on the previous slide. This works because in this case we have P as a function, <clears throat> v is an independent variable, and the fact that volume increases from 3 liters to 3.2 liters gives us a closed interval from 3 to 3.2. So we'll use that template, and we see that change in pressure divided by change in volume is given by the pressure evaluated at 3.2 liters minus the pressure evaluated at 3 liters, all divided by 3.2 minus 3. We substitute the values 3 and 3.2 in for v into our function, and we get 4 divided by 3.2 minus 4 divided by 3 divided by 3.2 minus 3. And when we perform some algebra and simplify the value, we get a negative 5 twelfths, which is approximately a negative 0.417. Now, the average rate of change of pressure with respect to volume on the closed interval from 3 to 3.2 has units associated with it. In particular, since pressure is measured in units of atmospheric pressure, we can associate that unit to each calculation of pressure. And we have volume is measured in liters, so again we can put liters with the 3.2 and with the 3. And again when we simplify, we see that the units associated with this average rate of change is units of atmospheric pressure per liter. We can also associate the average rate of change of pressure with respect to volume on the closed interval from 3 to 3.2 to the graph of the pressure function. Here we see a graph of the function P equals 4 divided by volume, and we see the points 3 comma pressure evaluated at 3 and 3.2 pressure evaluated at 3.2. When we go back and look at that average rate of change, we knew that the numerator was change in pressure. Well, that change in pressure is simply that, uh, that vertical distance between those two points, namely 4 divided by 3.2 minus 4 divided by 3 units of atmospheric pressure. The denominator in the uh, formula for the average rate of change in this case is that horizontal distance between the two points, change in volume, which is given by 3.2 minus 3 liters. So when we combine these pieces, this average rate of change of pressure with respect to volume on the closed interval from 3 to 3.2 is really the slope of the secant line between the two points, 3 comma pressure evaluated at 3 and 3.2 comma pressure evaluated at 3.2. We can also look at the average rate of change of pressure with respect to volume on a smaller interval. Not only is this interval shorter is also on the other side of 3. So we'll look at the closed interval from 2.99 to 3. So again, using our template, change in pressure divided by change in volume is given by the pressure evaluated at 3 minus the pressure evaluated at 2.99, all divided by 3 minus 2.99. But mathematically, this is equivalent to 
pressure evaluated at 2.99 minus the pressure evaluated at 3, all divided by 2.99 minus 3. Again, when we substitute the values into our pressure function, we get 4 divided by 2.99 to evaluate our pressure at 2.99 liters minus 4 divided by 3 divided by 2.99 minus 3, and again, our units associated with this average rate of change is units of atmospheric pressure per liter. And this calculates to be about negative 0.44593 units of atmospheric pressure per liter. Again, I can consider the graph of pressure with respect to volume on this shorter interval, and we see that the points are closer together, and I could zoom in on this graph. And again, the average rate of change of pressure with respect to volume on the interval from 2.99 to 3 is the same as the slope of the secant line connecting the points 2.99, pressure evaluated at 2.99, and 3, comma, pressure evaluated at 3. I could continue to calculate the average rate of change of pressure with respect to volume on shorter intervals, each of which contain three. And specifically, when I have one of the endpoints at volume equals three, on these shorter intervals, we would find that the average rates of change approach a negative 0.4 repeating units of atmospheric pressure per liter. A different notation actually would help us to consider what happens to the average rates of change of pressure with respect, to, with respect to volume on shorter and shorter intervals. So we're going to consider this other way of writing the average rate of change. Let's take the pressure evaluated at 3.2 minus the pressure evaluated at 3 divided by 3.2 minus 3, and let's rewrite the 3.2 as 3 plus a small amount. So I've got the pressure evaluated at 3.2 is really the pressure evaluated at 3 plus 2 tenths and then I subtract off the pressure evaluated at 3 and divide by 3 plus 2 tenths minus 3 and simplifying that denominator gives us a 2 tenths in the denominator. I can also do this with the average rate of change of pressure with respect to volume on the shorter interval uh, 2.99 to 3 by looking at the pressure evaluated at 2.99 minus the pressure evaluated at 3 all divided by 2.99 minus 3. This time I'll write 2.99 as 3 plus a negative 1 one hundredth. So I've got the pressure evaluated at 3 plus a negative 1 one hundredth minus the pressure evaluated at 3 divided by 3 plus a negative 1 one hundredth minus 3. Simplifying things, we get this next expression, which brings us back to the definition of average rate of change of a function f with respect to x on a closed interval from a to b. We saw earlier that we could write this as change in f divided by change in x, which is the function evaluated at b minus the function evaluated at a, all divided by b minus a. But now I could write that this equals the function evaluated a plus h minus the function evaluated at a, all divided by a plus h minus a, when h is equal to that difference between b and, b and a, or h is equal to b minus a, therefore b equaling a plus h. And then when I simplify that expression, I get f evaluated a plus h minus f evaluated a all divided by h. So these two forms, f evaluated b minus f evaluated a divided by b minus a and f evaluated a plus h minus f evaluated a all divided by h are the typical forms for what you see in a textbook.